welcome to our latest van tour. This is van build number 19. Crazy that we have built that many vans. And this is our mini beach house. This is a 144 Mercedes Sprinter. It's a 2022. It is not a four by four. And this is, like I said, our mini beach house layout that we've actually only built one other time. So we're really excited to have done this build for a second time and added some improvements, some additions on that I think work really well for this floor plan. So come on in. sprinter this is for a couple that is retired and going to be traveling and they're really excited to hit the road in their van now before we jump into the full tour I just want to say I am in love with the ceiling and the white oak details that we did throughout to tie in with the ceiling I just think it turned out beautiful and it's one of my favorite features so I'm throwing that in the beginning one of my favorite features is the ceiling also, if you are looking for this floor plans, all the specs, how high the countertops is, how, how big the kitchen is, how big the uppers are, all the nitty gritty details of this layout, this will be in our van layout guide, which is linked down below. It has all the floor plans for all the different build, builds that we've done over the years. So be sure to check that out. You also get access to our private community, which is really cool because there's so many people in there building their own van. So now let's jump into the layout. As you can see, right when you walk in, we have a very good sized kitchen. We have this nice solid surface countertop with a little insert that comes out. So if you want to have all your dirty dishes in the sink, not my style, but if that's your thing, you can then just throw this cover on top and nobody will know you have dirty dishes everywhere. So we have a nice deep stainless sink, a nice brushed nickel faucet. They have storage underneath of one drawer and a 65 liter isotherm fridge. Now, because this layout is smaller, we're in only in a 144 wheelbase sprinter, everything gets a little bit smaller. So kitchen is smaller, bathroom is smaller. These clients opted to not do a built-in toilet. They just have a cassette toilet that they will set into the shower and then take it out when they need to, to actually use the shower. It's not something you would wanna leave in there if you're showering. But this is one of our standard kind of styles of wet bath. We have a Nautilus self-cleaning retractable shower door, the Palisades wall tile, which is a vinyl click together wall tile for shower walls, and then our shower and a gray water tank underneath the van that holds 15 gallons, so their shower drains directly into that. Now, one of the other features up front is we have the nice headliner shelf trimmed out in white oak. Again, just looks so beautiful. We have a lagoon mount in the front of their van so they can swivel around the passenger seat and have a nice working space. That way, if somebody's still in bed sleeping, one of them can get up, prep the coffee, make their coffee in the kitchen and have a nice place to sit and work and eat, lounge, hang out, whatever they wanna do there. It is kind of just seating for one person, but it's a nice little addition in this floor plan. Now moving to the back of the van, we have upper cabinets on both sides, lots of overhead cabinet storage. We have a small dresser with three drawers. It is very narrow, but it's actually really deep. So it's still a great size storage for clothing and things you wanna take on the road. And then we have our bed area. This is actually an asymmetrical bench area because we made one side our standard 72 inches and the other side is only 67 inches. So that is why you see this table with a quite large angle on this. We decided to angle this and then not have any sharp points and rounding the corners so that this is their fill in piece for when they make their bed. I feel like the angle actually works really well and is actually a really nice detail. And again, with the lagoon, you can always swivel this out of the way. It still spins around. Now this is a larger table than we usually do. So it would like hit me in the belly. <laughs> I gotta get skinny over here but it does actually spin around. So if you wanted to, you could keep the angle toward the back of the van and sit back here and hang out. Um, it just is very versatile. This is a bamboo tabletop, which we actually really like doing the bamboo. It's really durable, holds up great, doesn't scratch easily. Um, and it just ties in beautifully with all their other wood details. 
In the back, we did add these fixed glass windows as well as the T-vent sliding door window that opens up. And then the factory back door windows came installed. And then we did our custom magnetic window covers in these. These actually turned out really nice because they're a little bit bigger windows than in the 170, these rear panel windows. So I love the surrounding glass all around back here where you can sit, hang out, and have fun and have a beautiful view like we do right now. We're up in Lucky Peak in Idaho and they actually just drained a lot of the water in the reservoir. So it's pretty low back there, but it's still beautiful. I love this van layout and this van design. Now, when these clients approached us, they were a little bit more budget conscious than a few of our other clients have been. Um, so we started really with a bare bones build of the 144 mini beach house, which in and of itself is a little bit less complex and a little bit less because of the less square footage. Um, and so we need less materials. They did, however, want to add some add-ons to this build. Um, they did want to go with 540 amp hours of lithium battery. So then we did install the RTX Dometic 2000 um, air conditioner, which to me is like a must if you're going to build a van. So I'm really glad that they did that. And they opted for the upgrade with the solid surface countertops, which look beautiful in this van. And again, like Sarah mentioned, with the bathroom layout, we were able to save some space because they didn't want the built-in urine diverting toilet. Again, they're going to use a cassette toilet instead. So, and then when it comes to the outside of the van, there were a few things that we didn't do on this one that we've been doing typically. Um, so it is, it doesn't have the exterior truck bed treatment spray because once they picked it up, they realized how much they love the color, both above the plastic paneling on the sides and below. Um, we haven't done any suspension upgrades to this yet. They did want to drive it around and see how they liked driving the van before they did any of those. Um, we didn't upgrade wheels and tires. We do have our roof rack with 150 watts of solar on the roof, uh, the WineGuard cell phone Wi-Fi booster, as well as a 95 liter Rome uh, Adventure Co. storage box on the roof rack. So because their van is so small and we didn't do any rear door boxes, we opted for a little bit of storage up on top of the roof rack, which is super convenient to get to because you just climb up the ladder and there it is, you can access it. So as you know, with our builds, we are all about function. So let's show you functionally how to operate the electrical system of this van. Get this table out of the way. So we like to hide and conceal all of the majority of the switches that don't look like household switches like these light switches do. So we have it inside this cabinet. You open this cabinet up. This is the touchscreen display for the Servo GX. Right now we have their three water tank sensors showing. So their fresh water tank, which is uh, 20, or excuse me, their fresh water tank is 33 gallons. They have, like Sarah said, an 11 gallon under the kitchen gray water tank and a 15 gallon gray water tank for the shower. We scroll through here, you get the nice flow chart. And then when we come over here to kind of the control panel, this also has their inverter remote. So right now their AC mode is on, which means the inverter is on, which means they could power the outlet in the kitchen to use an induction cooktop. They can also use their um, uh, two and a half gallon water heater. Um, so love this feature, love the way this integrates. We also have 12 volt ball valve switches for their kitchen tank valve to drain as well as their shower valve and a switch to turn on their wine guard cell and Wi-Fi booster. We have a couple remotes over on the side, one for the AC unit, then the other for the LED tow kick light, which is underneath the kitchen. So behind here, we have the actual Servo GX and a 12 volt fuse block, as well as another 12 volt fuse block in their bench. This van is powered by Battleborn batteries. Like I said, this has 540 amp hours of lithium battery from Battleborn batteries. So that is two of their GC3, that stands for game changer, because this battery is a game changer. We have two of them on their side, stacked and bolted together, and through bolted through the bottom of the van with ratchet straps holding those in place. Those are connected to their 3000 watt Victron inverter charger. This has a 30 amp alternator charging using the Victron Orion DC to DC charger, as well as, like I said, 150 watts of solar running through their solar controller. So a really nice robust electrical system, which is going to allow them to do long-term traveling up and down the West Coast. These clients are from the East Coast. They spent the majority of their professional careers out there, and now they are really excited to explore the West Coast of California, Oregon, um, sometime here in Idaho as well. So 
all in all super excited at how this van turned out and I think it's a really functional van for what they want which is to be able to adventure and hit a lot of trailheads which is ultimately why they opted for the 144 wheelbase because if you've been to any trailheads hiking biking you know that those parking lots get pretty dang small so as I was mentioning the white oak is one of my favorite features in this van and back here we incorporated white oak to trim out this material in the in the middle which is what is on their ceiling so they wanted to match back here this is actually one of my favorite design elements with clients is they kind of get to pick what we do back here it's kind of a free-for-all do you want to do something different do you want to do the slat look do you want to just keep it simple um, do you want to leave it blank we've done a lot of different things over the years but I was really excited that these clients decided they wanted to tie in their ceiling back here and then we trimmed it out with the white oak which just looks I love it so much and then this is also functional you guys know we are about aesthetics and things being beautiful but also being super functional so back here they have a good amount of storage in here and then this is also where they would access their fill for their water tank Alex has shown this a million times if you've ever watched any of our van tours but I'll show you guys again this is Alex's invention this is our water fill hose this is the first time I filmed this part so I'm gonna pretend I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> this is a quick connect stainless steel hose. I think I'm saying all this right. And one of the reasons why we do this and not cut something in on the outside of the van, number one, we're all about form and function. And a lot of the time when you cut things into a curved side of a van that is a flush mount that's flat, you're gonna have rim rippling, you're gonna have to caulk it a bunch, silicone it to make it waterproof. And we don't want clients to have long-term issues with rust or anything happening to these beautiful vans on the outside. So we make ours discreet inside of the van, but also able to pull it out outside because anytime you're filling up water, it's going to leak. It's going to go all over when you disconnect. So quick connect on this. We have a shutoff valve so that if you're not at your actual hose bib when you're filling up, you can just, oh, there's a little water in the line. <laughs> You can just, and this is why we put this on here, so that you shut this off before you stick it in your van. That way you're not having any leaking coming out of this hose. But anyway, that's one of the reasons why we do that. I'm not sure Alex has ever gone into the full spiel on that one, so I decided to do it. You nailed it, by the way. Oh, thank you. We do have some plumbing lines running in the back, so we make sure to protect those so that when they are throwing things in here for storage, they're not hitting any of those plumbing or electrical lines that are running to get water to both sides of the van and electrical to both sides of the van. Now, they also do have an outdoor shower back here. Really simple setup. It is connected to their whole fresh water tank and their hot water heater so they can actually have hot water back here there is a hose that is easy storage in these back boxes you just hook it up super quick you have hot and cold like I said this does have you know like the hose shower on it so it's not just gonna spray water everywhere as soon as you hook it up but a nice option to you know sand got sandy feet wash yourself off after the beach kids dogs whatever it is and this is actually a really simple affordable option to have an outdoor shower now if you wanted to get crazy you know you could like find a mount to like put it back there but ideally you want to be a little bit further away from your van when you're hosing off so that you're not splashing water inside your van now you might be wondering well if we have our plumbing connections back here in the back and we don't cut anything on the outside of the van for the plumbing what about the electrical when we want to plug into shore power well, we also try to make that discreet. Again, we're not cutting in anything on the outside of the van just because of all the reasons I already told you. And we also wanna make sure that nobody knows where these things are so they can't mess with them. That would be terrible. So for the electrical shore power is actually underneath the van in the back. There is just a simple plug there. You can plug your extension cord into and plug into shore power. Simple and easy and the owners know exactly where it is you guys enjoyed this van tour of van number 19 again this is a 144 mini beach house layout by custom crafted vans thank you to our amazing team that we have working with us that help us crank these out could it because at this point it is no longer just Sarah and myself working at our shop at our house we have an incredible team and a beautiful 7,000 square foot shop that we get to work at every day um, and it's also a little further away from the kiddos so they don't try to come out and work with us all day long 
Uh, thank you guys again. If you like this, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more van life content and van tours from Custom Crafted Vans. And we will see you guys next time.